So electrical enclosures can really benefit from mass production pretty because very often they're customized to the individual PCBs. The molding cost and the upfront cost of beating them started can be so great that it's better to just produce the parts themselves rather than tool up for them. And since Pretty does not have that tooling cost, it's an ideal way to create a very nice looking custom box for whatever your electrical component may be. And we've talked about electrical enclosures in many different contexts in the past, talking about the design of them in order to further optimize the cost by designing for the 3D printing process itself. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the actual lids themselves, because there's some tricks you can do in order to ensure that you're getting the optimal cost per part out of an electrical enclosure design. So when working with electrical enclosures, very often you will have some kind of bottom component and then a lid up on top of it. And that lid will have some sort of a lip or finding features in order to allow it to lock with the center component. But what almost everybody does, and rightfully so, is they just cut a line straight through the middle of it. And that creates a very standard type of lid. Well, you crop off the top of whatever the box is, and that is going to be your lid. But the problem with this is that you introduce a number of different problems. Number one, how do you actually print this? Do you print it flat like this facing up? Do you print it on its edge, which is ideal and better for auto ejection? Or do you have to print it upside down in order to have a nice uniform outer finish? This is necessary because this allows the layers to all align completely right, but you end up with a top that is the rastering of a standard 3D print, which is not really ideal because it does not match the sidewalls. If you print like this, all of the walls match, but then you have rastering up here and the bed material down on the bottom. And of course, if you print like this, you now have the bed texture on the bottom and the layer lines around the other side. It's much better if a component has a uniform texture all the way around. So what are some ways of achieving that? Well, one of the simplest solutions is to take the enclosure and instead of cutting it straight across, cut it at an angle. If you cut it at an angle, now what you have done is you've made the two halves print as individual kind of pyramids, which means that the layer lines go all the way around the entire circumference and outer perimeters of the part. This means that the outer surface is much more uniform. Now, it does mess with your geometry a little bit, and if you have internal components, it can mess with how those are actually mounted. So this can sometimes be challenging, but you don't always have to have a full 35 or 45 degree angle. It can be more subtle, and that is doable. But ultimately, what ends up though, is that the layers do all align, and it looks like these two halves were printed together, basically at this angle like this, but then have a matching parting seam. So this is a very good way to create a very uniform looking part where every surface, no matter how you look at it, looks exactly the same as any other. But there's a variation of this. You can't always cut a part directly diagonally down the middle. There's a variation of this that is slightly less controlled and slightly less uniform, but still viable, which is printing the part diagonally. Now with these original enclosures, we have these back chamfers. So you could print the part like this so that the bed layered part is only this small chamfer on the bottom and that only has the bed surface and the rest of it is the nice uniform part. But again, you have that exterior part, but you can't mount it up like this because there's nowhere to balance, but you actually can. Let's go ahead and redesign this so that it can be printed belly down, but at an angle. This is what you would end up with. You have the enclosure just like so, the lid pops off like this, and now you have this flat space of the main core enclosure that you're able to print like this. This does have this downside of requiring support along this front surface to make sure it doesn't fall off. And if the part is really long, you need to have quite a bit of support. But overall, the outer surface finish of this part is very, very uniform. Every side of this piece matches. And then when you get the lid, the lid is printed flat, which gives it better strength. Or you could actually figure out a way to print this diagonally as well. But you have this little lock-in feature that can be handy, right like this. But then this also leaves the top surface of the lid to take on any sort of text or monitoring, or just be separate from the rest of the part because the lid is separate from the rest of the part. So that change in texture can be kind of a notifying feature to allow the person to understand what side of this part is actually the top of it. So this is a very simple way to just cut basically a dog leg through the part so that you can pull off the lid, print it flat, and then take the angled upper component and print it facing down so that the outer surface finish of it is totally uniform without any sort of variation between what is against the bed or vertical or the top and side or anything else. 
all the sides are exactly the same, which creates a nice looking final part that you can then meet with the upper lid. And if you want to print the lid vertically or on its side or anything else, you can totally do that. This is ideal to print vertically. The reason we like to print vertically is that number one, it's easy to knock parts off, and it also allows you to print larger parts because they can be stood up on end where there is greater vertical distance on our production machines. So if you would like a quote for your uh, electrical enclosure to be mass produced up to tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands, go ahead and hit us up at slant3d.com and we'll get you a quote. And we would also be willing to do a design review for you if you want us to take a look at that. Like and subscribe and comment down below if there's other topics about mass production 3D printing that you would like us to cover. There are a lot of these neat little tricks that can really optimize the cost and optimize the appearance and performance of your parts. Have a great day, everybody.